Tiana Boswell, and I wrote, directed, and executive produced Affliction Between Us. We now return to busy business lady who's so busy with business. No, no, I cannot make that business meeting. I've got a different business meeting at three, and we'll be doing business there. I was wondering if you're free for coffee. Oh, no, I can't. I've got a lunch meeting, and then a meeting after lunch. Hey, yo! What's going on, fellow bench warmers? What's happening? Back at it again. Hitting y'all with another interview. We know y'all love them. First of all, this is a big one because I've never spoken. I've never spoke to a a, a film director, any type of right, any right, 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 right. none of that. Um, so I actually have a lot of per. I see these that you got. I have a lot of my own personal questions. Okay. Right. But is there any nickname you want you want to go by? You just want to put your full name out on the um, streets. I'll let you introduce yourself. Well, I'm Tiana, but I got the nickname T Boss on campus, so T -Boss. it kind of. Yes, because gotcha. my name's Tiana Boswell, so it just kind of stuck. Like, oh, nice. freshman like on campus, so I was running for Miss Freshman at the time, and they were just like, you know what? I just feel like your name needs to be T Boss. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm with it. Nice. Like right, I'm just like, I'm with it. So it's also a surprise people call me that because only people on campus know, so if they say it, I, I kind of like it though. Dope. Hey, T Boss, hey, all of her socials will be in the description down below, y'all. Please go check that out. Dope, dope, dope shit down there, for real. Uh, also, yeah, you can crush it. Yeah, okay. Free rank, free rank, free rank. Right. Um, so I mentioned you said you're not from here. Can I ask where you're from? So I'm actually from Fort Worth, Texas. Well, Arlington, but my family's from Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. And we're um, closer to the downtown area. So. Got you. All right, that's dope. I want to know when exactly did your interest in film develop? So that's a great question. So it started my junior year of college so after the basics you know after sophomore year you kind of find your direction mm -hmm. i was a psychology ma major minor minoring in criminal justice and then i decided to do pre-law at the time and mm -hmm. as i was in pre-law society and i was going to different um events um trying to prepare for the lsat i was just like i just don't think this is like my calling i was like i just don't feel like yeah. this is something that i can see myself doing i always get feedback you know that i i speak well i would make you know i'll put up a good argument I'd be a great attorney but I was like right. I just don't think that that's me so I kind of started off college trying to find my niche it took me a long time to find it but I launched a YouTube channel in 2019 mm -hmm. and um, I just taught myself some um, editing skills just kind of the basics on YouTube and then my dad was like you know you're really good at this you should you know add a major and I think in my head I'm trying to graduate I don't yeah, want to add a major I'm, I'm not trying, trying to hear that <laughs> but then he was like just try he was like just a semester just try it see what you like and I was like okay so I had started that spring of 2019 I started that spring and I was like I want I want to keep it so he was yeah, just like right. I told you so I had to spend an extra year to graduate this coming spring because I'm really class of 2017 I mean I, I graduated in, in high school in 2017 but I really class of 21 oh, okay, but okay. I was just like you know I enjoy it so much it doesn't like time flies i don't even feel like it's a dreadful year like I, i'm really actually gonna miss it so yeah in fact when you're doing something you enjoy time right that's the best thing. i know one, i really wish you you would figure out what you would want before you jump into college right. i feel like oh, so yeah. many people just like you can iron out the wrinkles of your life so yeah, pristine I if you really wish like i just like Oh, man. Being that young, you don't even really just know who you are yet right. when you're getting into college yeah. or what you, you truly you want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. That, that take a lot of soul yeah. searching so and time to just think. I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. Um, mm -hmm. So, in the next five years, what we got plans for Ms. t -Bots. So, in the next five years, I would hope that I have a stable career enough to sustain my I consider filmmaking my hobby just because you know it's so hard in filmmaking to you know be at the top but you have to start somewhere so right. I see myself you know having a career that I enjoy uh, in the video production industry mm -hmm. but 
that is able to sustain my hobby and hopefully own my own production company so that I can mm -hmm. continue doing oh. independent filmmaking and then who knows I might be writing for um, HBO own or any other network because I'm, I'm a screenwriter first so I know right, I direct right, right. I produce and all that but I'm really big on my writing like that's where my psychology comes to play and that's why I kept that other major mm -hmm. because I really I really enjoy taking what I learned in psychology and creating deeper meanings behind my films so what do you do to get in like the creative space for like your, your screenwriting so what I do, to be completely honest, is I spend about three hours and I turn off everything in the house. Turn off the TV, turn mm -hmm. off my phone, everything because I don't want any distractions. Like once I get in that zone, yeah. I like to make it flow. And it's like when you have your phone on or different distractions, it kind of cuts the flow. Like mm -hmm. when you're writing, it's like what comes to mind, like as you start thinking about like, um, just things you've watched, just inspirations of different things going on in the world or anything. It's like when you cut off and isolate yourself, it's like you're able to really get in touch with your, your thoughts and be self-aware. And I'll be honest, the current film that I'm working on right now, I had started it when I did that the week before I was in New Jersey working on a movie. And while I was literally Malha Club in the air on the plane, I was finishing up my current film because I had so much time to focus just looking out at the clouds. Like mm -hmm. that's how I was able to finish that. Oh, yeah. So I know so much inspiration come out of that. I right. love looking at clouds. And I'm the only child, so I got a lot of quiet time, a lot of time to talk to myself. Lots of quiet time. <laughs> a lot of time to talk to myself. So I'm I'm used to it. On average, how long does it take you to finish a, a piece like that? So for a short film, uh, about five to eight minutes, it would take me, if I say myself, about three hours. For a rough copy, it'll probably take me six hours and all. So probably two days of doing that. Okay. But for it to be for perfected, it would take probably two weeks because I constantly want to go back and perfect it. Like, well, this conversation could be better. This conversation can be more meaningful. Mm -hmm. How would this character react to this certain situation? Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to filmmaking and creating characters, you have to know this character like the back of your hand. Like, right. you have to create a true person. Like, you have to, when you watch different series and you connect with the characters, you're like, you know how this person will react before they're in situations leading up mm -hmm. to the next episode, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how well those writers know these characters because they have to almost in a sense know basically when you write films you create characters you have to know their birthplace you have to know right. um, how they grew up how what their family dynamic is what builds them like all the characteristics that create each individual person makes us unique you have to create that when you create a person so that as you think you know how they would react in certain situations I think well coming from this person's background you know um, being in a single mother household for example um, I'm not but if a character were to be you're like how well would they take on their mother dating a new person you know mm -hmm. with that mentality so um, Whenever I go in and try to perfect my craft and watch kind of um, inspirational videos to how to get better, they say you have to create this character to the point where if a production company were to take on this piece, you know each character's birthplace, you know their living dynamic, how many siblings they would have. You don't even have to yeah, know the yeah. siblings' names, but yeah. is this person only child? Do they have three siblings? Are they? Did they grow up in the system? You have to know every dynamic. So you present it. They're like, we trust you because we know that you can carry this on to something yeah, bigger. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. Right. right. You got it handled. I'm right. sure the casting would be crazy. Like, how do you go about like casting? Whew, I actually just finalized my casting today. I was so stressed Ooh. out because I have a current film I'm working on, and it's I believe my biggest project yet. But it has about ten characters in it. Mm -hmm. Two main characters, a mother and a son. But it took me forever to find the mother because I did a casting call on mass media, had people share, and people were sending me their acting reels. Mm -hmm. And since this character, um, the mother, I have such emotional dynamics with the attachment they have with the son. I was like, I can't just pick anybody. I was Definitely. like, you know, sometimes with the um, being in college and you know all these people believing in you and then want to be a part of your project, you don't want to turn anybody down. But I also know the quality work that I put out. It's mm -hmm. like if they're not ready, I'm not going to put them in a situation that could take away from the story. Yeah, because the story is solid and it's like if I have the perfect people to depict what I'm saying, it's going to be such an emotional piece. Yeah. But um, I finally solidified my person. Um, First, you have to decide a description. It's like I told you about when it comes to creating a character, you have to know their you have to know their weight, like an ideal weight, body style, what they look like, what their ethnicity would be, and then you have to find someone that fits that description. Yeah. And not only do they fit that description, can they portray in this role with these different scenes? Can they just do you know um, basic level um, scenes, or can they do emotional scenes? Can they handle someone getting someone you know? having a fatality in a movie you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like we have to think of 
how well they can uh, portray these different scenes and i would say i have a solid i have a solid team right now i actually um took a leap of faith a couple weeks ago i messaged this woman that i found on instagram mm -hmm. and she actually um has been on Oprah Winfrey Network, Queen um, mm. Queen Sugar, and I was just like, I don't think that I was like, you know, my I'm a college student, I can't pay this woman. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even think she's gonna say it. She'd be like, um, oh, ma'am, you can't afford me. I didn't know what she was gonna say, <laughs> but I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna just type up something. Just so I just kind of let her know the um the film that I'm working on, the dynamic behind it, the psychology behind it when I wrote it, and she was like, I love the piece. It's so powerful. She said it was hard to read, but it's so necessary to be put out to the public. I'll do it, mm -hmm. and that literally put so much, so much faith into me into this day. film. It did because I'm like this woman that hasn't even met me before, right, yeah. just knows my work, just knows that from this piece how powerful it is that she wants to be a part of it and help it see it, help see the vision go bigger. So I was like, you know, now I'm unstoppable. You know, yeah, it, you look, to so, anybody watching, you miss 100 of the shots you don't. You do. I, I promise you. I talk my way into a whole lot of situations. I'll be like, oh, didn't think I'd make it this far. Right. So when she said, I was like, oh, yeah. So I'm really cold. Is she, 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 she the first uh, celebrity you, you reached out to on social media? So I will say yes, because um, whenever I think of connecting with them, I always try to have something to show for what I'm doing. It's like I could, right. if I just presented them an idea, it's just that. It's just an idea. Yeah. So I like to wait till I'm in my craft. I'm like, okay, this is a solid script. It's like, this is what I bring to the table. I know what you bring to the table. Would you give me the opportunity to let you do your job? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the approach I take because um, a lot of actors, whenever they... Um, get the opportunity to, to connect with different students they know they can't get um they probably won't be paid or compensated but if the piece is powerful enough it can add to their acting reels so acting Definitely. reels is Definitely. just a compilation of their diff of uh their work being portrayed of them acting so mm -hmm. that when they audition people can say oh this is how versatile this actor is yeah. you know we want them so i always say that you know even though i can't pay you in monetary value right now if you believe in me i would definitely tell you that i don't put out anything mediocre so it's like this can be shown to people beyond own like even bigger than that you know there's i know own was a big thing for her but it's like i always think even the greatest have room for improvement so it's like she's there there's no telling where she can go from there so mm -hmm. i'm just grateful that she took a chance on me so i really have a lot riding on this next film somebody, i'm super excited somebody's gonna be watching it so I, I feel it i feel it if they like what they see they'll they'll call and how right. long do you think it's gonna take to um finalize shooting editing so with my last film, Affliction Between Us, we I saw that. it was I it. Did. I did. I did. so um, it was an eight day shoot, and when I tell you, I was so mm. nervous because everything that could go wrong was going wrong that day. Like my lead actor was four hours late. I would, we're just sitting around filling our fingers because he locked his his keys inside his car. It was just oh, a whole big thing. Oh. And then I was just like, you know what, Laura, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I was like, I'm getting real anxious. <laughs> like, help me yeah. understand because yeah. now my my uh, team is hungry because I'd have to wait waiting on this actor yeah. so I'm going to get food I'm just like you know what I just feel like something's really going to happen and then my lead actress uh Raina Janelle her aunt had passed mm. the day before so I was like mm. is this even going to be anything so this was my first film I was like everything was going bad my mom had to calm me down so I said I just feel like it's a sign I don't need to do it she's like it's not that kind of sign she was like it's a sign for something but she was like just take a deep breath everything's going to work out so I actually had to move filming a week out so it was Originally like the first um, or second week in November, but I ended it ended up pushing it to November 20th So mm -hmm. it was it was a lot going on. I actually even uh, lost my godmother right after I filmed it So it was a lot going on but to, I say all that to say I believed in myself and I've submitted it in a festival a really big festival This was my first piece. I ended indie up festival, right? Yes, I ended up winning the award of recognition in the Indie Fest Film Award. So that's a big deal. So that's, that's why I got that yeah. nice trophy and it was just kind of something to show like keep going because definitely. I really didn't know how well it was until I saw the reaction of other people because mm -hmm. it's like of course I'm gonna think it's good, but I'm like this is my first piece. I don't know. Right. It's like I don't know how it's gonna be received. I was like, are people gonna understand the plot? Are they gonna understand the loopholes the that I left in there? I was like, am I gonna confuse people? But I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, put it out there and then see the feedback I get. And luckily, luckily, man, I swear, I know that's the toughest part, like showing people your hard work, and like yes. anything that you put so much work into. I know that's tough. Is that your only film festival you were a part of? So I actually have been in about featured in five, um, only 
one was a nomination and wasn't one and then the other one was an indie fest film award so i've been in indie x films and i was nominated for um best female director first time and then i was also nominated for best drama short um in the student film section so i didn't win those but when i saw the competition i was like okay y'all been doing this longer than me right. so i'm content so, you know i'm just right. happy to be in the ranks with y'all right how, how so. did it feel to go through all that adversity with your first film while you're in college still so, and win that award um i would say it was definitely hard because um I anticipated my godmother being able to um, see mm -hmm. my film. So I knew she was sick at the time, but I was like, you know what? As soon as I finish filming, I'm coming straight to Fort Worth and I'm gonna see you, right. the third. And then the day um, I was gonna see her, they were saying, you know, don't come to the hospital because you know, she's about to be released, you know, she's doing better. So I'm like, okay, so I'm thinking in my head, everything's cool, I can breathe. Yeah, but great. then the next day, there we couldn't get in touch with her, everything was going on. And then they were like, the hospital told her like, you know, she didn't make it and I was just like, Oh. Right after that phone call, it was literally the worst pain I've ever mm. felt in my life that was not physical. Like, I got that right. phone call, and I was literally at a um, a boxing watch party, just having a regular night. And um, I stepped outside, and so my phone kept blowing up, and then I answered my phone, and my mom told me what happened. I dropped my phone, and I literally broke down crying, and I was just like, this cannot be real. Oh, so, um, luckily, we wrapped up filming before that happened, so... I was able to finish it because I don't I don't even the headspace I was in I don't even think I could have finished filming especially right. by the adversity I was going through I was no, like you know what right. it's just not gonna get put out like I'd probably push it off and then I would have never seen mm -hmm. how well I actually am at this because it was kind of one of those where I'm just doing it it originally was for a, a project in my class um, with my professor but he was like no we need to film this and he's like take it past it was on um, video production mm. one so not even two video production one so a lot of people um they don't even get their their scripts aren't ready for filming but the class voted on mine to be the one that we filmed and shot right. so i was like okay that's that's a sign cool. so i was just like you know all these signs are showing me you know this is what you're supposed to be doing so yeah, i think all sign. that yeah i think all that kind of was different signs of god showing me like stop doubting yourself like mm -hmm. just keep going and so ever since then i just kept trying to build that momentum to put out the next thing so all right thanks Find your calling so. and push towards it. You got to. Yeah. Is there uh, anything that you do to like, I guess, relieve the pressure when you feel in all the weight on you and you're so, having to develop your art? That's a great question. I'm still a work in progress because when I say I have severe anxiety, like people don't know, okay. but like <laughs> I have severe yeah. anxiety and I normally have panic attacks probably twice a year, but it's always normally like um, each semester, like around finals. But I've learned to, um, if I feel myself overwhelmed, stop committing to everything. Because I'm one of those where it's like, if people believe me, I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, even if my schedule's crammed, if I'm overwhelmed, like, I'm not going to tell you no. But it's like, what I had to learn is that you can't tell everybody yes. Mm. if you're not truly available so what I like to do is I like to schedule my week out and it's like if and I schedule free time so that if something comes up last minute I can have the time for it but it's like if it doesn't fall in that free time during that week I just can't do it because it's like I don't want to put myself in a position where whatever it is I can do it to my best ability or it's right. like I do it and it's not like I really was able to do it, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's just help us on their homework or, you know, help us somebody on a business venture. It's like, if I don't have the solidified time, we're just gonna have to postpone. It's like, if they can't postpone, it's like, okay, you know, that's unfortunate, but I just have to let it go because I have to understand like my anxiety and the way it's set up, mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I have some structure because when I don't have any structure, it's terrible. I'm so right. that's what I do. And in my free time, I like schedule time to go to a lake. I like to I like the outdoors. So you know, mm -hmm. I told my isolation to turn my phone off. I also turn my phone off because I have a million notifications going off all the time. I just like yeah. to isolate and so i'd be like mama don't call me for two hours i'm saved don't worry about me yeah. but i'm look this phone going off and i like to um go to this uh lake i don't know if i've been to town lake in cyprus have i been there before mm, I don't know. If I haven't, it's so nice it's um out in cyprus and it's just this uh little pier where you can eat your food and stuff and look at water it's mm. so peaceful um mm. it's getting cold now but i see that sometimes people would you know take a picnic blanket and do a picnic i was like i might bring a picnic out here but so, yeah. that's what I, I like to do and just kind of be by myself yeah and a then, long time is very underrated yeah and then jump back yeah, to reality yeah, that's after. That's for sure um, real quick, I'm interested. 
your favorite director? My favorite director. So my favorite writer slash director would be Ooh, it's it's a tie, I will say, between Ava DuVernay and Jordan Peele because they're mm. so different. Right. But they're so powerful in each because, you know, Jordan Peele, we have that horror, we have mm -hmm. that, you know, suspense. Yeah. And I like to always create suspense in my films because I'm so inspired by him. But I haven't produced a horror yet. But Ava DuVernay, the way she portrayed When They See Us, that doctor series, have you seen it? Yeah, I did. With Things Honored at Five. It was With incredible. With Things Five. When I tell you I love that woman, I actually had uh after i saw it i tweeted it i was like you know what you're so inspired like i love you so much like just thinking she never see it and she responded and i was like you know what lord i see Everybody what you're doing you. i was like i see what you're doing so i was like look <laughs> so i was like listen on the way is up so <laughs> he just came out with the um new candy man so i saw that that was part of his Oh, like it was Jordan Peele. Okay. He helped on it. Okay. Yeah, he helped. Okay. So, yeah, they're so different, but I really, I think, mainly look up to Ava DuVernay just because she's a woman and a mm -hmm. black woman at that. And the way she depicted your, when they uh, see us, it was just so such a powerful piece. And just the way I watched her behind the scenes and everything when she discussed about how she went about casting, how she went about taking her, her cast and having them follow these characters that they were going to be. Because, like I told you, you have to know these characters like the back of your hand. Okay. Considering these were real people, they had to follow these people around learn their life look at scrapbooks when they're younger like they had to become this person in the in this pro, um in that production and i just felt it was so beautifully done she won so many so many awards for it and i just look at her and i just think that can be me because it's like i work so hard and it's like i told you i don't put out anything mediocre like if i have to push a date out i will to make sure that everything is perfected and i just think she just screams black excellence black power black girl magic and that's truly uh, inspiration when I write. Definitely, so I like that. Are there, <laughs> are, there, are there any foreign films that you're into as well, or mainly, mainly domestic? Um, so when it comes to foreign films, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I don't really like how it depends on subtitles. Like that's the biggest thing. Like with right. anime, like when people be like, just watch anime. I'm like, I don't know if it's my attention span or what. Look, I don't know if it's my attention span or what, but I'm like, I just, I just can't focus. Like I can't. I mean, they got some anime in English too. Like yeah, that. see, I'll watch that, but it's like once I gotta focus on that, I don't know. I just be like, I feel like after a while, I just forget they there. Like I read them, like that sounds weird. Like <laughs> it's I forget crazy that they're there while I'm reading, right. but I'm just natural at it now. Right, but no, yeah. Um, well, I will say because that's not the only foreign uh, films that are. I will say I really fell in love with Who Killed Sarah. And that was I believe I didn't get film. to check it. It was on Wait, Netflix, right? Ooh, that was okay. I didn't get to check it out. Did I see that? I don't think I seen that. I love Who Killed Sarah. I heard so um it's actually not filmed in English. I believe they're in Spain, but don't quote mm. me on it. They might be, but I know it's a different country that speaks Spanish. And uh -huh. so um, I, I read the subtitles. And, well, they actually had a version where they had an um, English script done on, over, so they did like a voiceover for it. Mm -hmm. But I fell in love with Who Killed Sarah. So okay. I will say I'm, I'm I do like out. the form. So I'm yeah, like, I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a but um, yeah, I what's the what's the newest one that's coming out? I can, as much as I see it, I can't even think of the name. The squid game. Yes. Like, oh. why can I think of that? Yeah, that's <laughs> a form. I haven't that's finished it yet, sure. so don't spoil it for me. But that's the right. That's a foreign one too, so I'm, I'm seeing what the hype is about. Oh, definitely, that was crazy. I feel like a, a, a huge just push of foreign films came out of nowhere. Since like I think, I think Alice in Borderland, Squid Game, right. they have another one that's, they have like two more on Netflix that just came out, everybody talking about, I forgot what it was called. I Parasite was lost. Probably pushing it Parasite was good. Parasite won an award, didn't it? It did win. It won a you couple of awards. check that out. That's, some, that's some subtitles. That, that is subtitles, you, but it's a really good you, film. That's what I've heard from people. What I was like, I'm just doing it. Hulu, HBO? I, I think it's on Hulu. I watched it on one, two, three. <laughs> I can I can show you some legal right. ways to do yeah. <laughs> right. I, mean, I didn't see it nowhere else. I definitely but um, no, nah, that's definitely it, it. won that award for a reason. That's mm -hmm. dope. Okay, was, well, I'm gonna have to put that on my list of must see. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie. So a lot of people don't know, but Certified Lover Girl, Hopeless Romantic. I love a good look. I love a good romance. Um, my favorite used to be um. 
the fault in our stars. People are always surprised when I say that because mm-hmm. I don't I don't create love stuff. That's love the one with uh, yeah, chest cancer. cancer. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. leukemia. I know that like the back of my hand. That film I've seen it so many times. People will be like, "Are you depressed?" When I watch it, I'm like, <laughs> "No, I just really love it's like right." I just love it just because if you think of the psychological factors and studies that they had to do to depict these characters it's so much deeper than that but I will say since the photographers came out with Issa Rae Oh, I like, I like that. Scene. I like. It's pretty tight because I love my black love, so I'm like, I don't know. It's my gay fall our stars and run for their money because <laughs> fall our stars came out in like 2013, and so that's been the running favorite. But that yeah. photograph came out in what, like, January of no, it was like the Valentine's Day of 2019, I think. Or mm. 2020, one of the yeah. two. It might have been 2020 because I think like the pandemic slapped us all the back in the right. Like, right after. The pandemic pushed a lot of things. Back. Right. Did so, that affect you with your screenwriting at all? So, um, no, but it was very challenging because um, I filmed my last film November 20th of 2020. So we're given an idea of how to kind of move forward with the pandemic, but it was our first time back in person on campus. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of obstacles because I was like, I don't really want to expose these people trying to get this film out. I was like, I don't know what the race film even gonna go. I'm putting these people at risk. But yeah. I was like, please come COVID tested before. And I had just recovered from COVID, so that mm-hmm. whole semester was just terrible. Out. Right? Yes, that whole semester was just terrible. When I tell you that semester, I had <laughs> so many obstacles. I was like, Lord, what are you doing? I don't understand. Yeah, I'm don't kill me, make me strong. Everybody right. says. So, um, yeah, so many challenges. I literally had recovered. I had got um, September 19th, I had got COVID, and I didn't take the normal two weeks. I had took a month to recover. I was like, mm-hmm. God, is how you want to take me out? Like, <laughs> is this really how you want to take me out? But really I made, bad. yes, I had everything. I had, only thing I didn't have was a fever. So it was weird. So I was laughing when I go out of public, but like temperature checks, I'm thinking, y'all just don't know. <laughs> I had COVID, and I ain't never had a temperature. But I had the sweats, I had, um, I had the cough, I couldn't breathe, I was in and out the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then they were out of ventilators and stuff. And so they were like, since I'm young, they didn't want to put me on it right. if I could fight it through. But then you get there, it's like, well, your, your body just got to fight it. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you give mean me something. Like, like, and I have bad anxiety. I cannot express that enough. So imagine me going to the hospital. Ooh, I'm thinking I'm about to die. And they're like, well, there's nothing we can do. I'm just like, well, y'all better figure something out. I'm like, like, I've had so many COVID scares or you don't even catch COVID, but you just feel, you just get paranoid and you just feel like you've got something. I had my, look, when well, my dad mm-hmm. takes care of me, out. he was leaving food at my door and stuff. And then when he have to come give me my medicine, he come in like a full body suit. Like, you know how <laughs> when people come in the <laughs> like thing, like, suit? yes. And I was just thinking, I was like, okay, I don't <laughs> think it's that bad. He said, I take no chances. They'd be like, open your mouth. No, He'd be like sorry. reaching real far to like give me the medicine. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but yes, he was paranoid. And anytime I got a little cough, he was like, Tiana, I bet not have what you didn't got. <laughs> so, and my mom, she um, she's a part of the vulnerable, vulnerable community because she has lupus so luckily we have a two-story house so I literally had to stay isolated in my room okay. for a month I, when I tell you I was like I already got the house Ugh, I could not but I was like so scared to even come near my mom she had to stay down so I didn't yeah. even luckily I have my own bathroom too so I just went from my bathroom to my room okay. but I slept most of the time so I didn't really feel the entire month that I was quarantined but it definitely was like okay Kobe you can go on and go yes. run your course and get up out of here I got stuff to do and yeah, so yeah, I'm glad you yeah. got through that for real. Cause our, anybody that lost their life, please, that's serious. Yeah, it Y'all was definitely vaccinated. scary, for sure. I'm fully vaccinated now, guys. Hey, so, go to the game. Cause not gonna lie, I was waiting till it got FDA approved. Cause I said, no, oh, yeah, and I was one of those. I was like, well, I already had COVID, so it's, you know, I mean, I can yeah, wait it out. No, yeah. it took me a while to get it to. I, I yeah, I had to wait. How big of an impact would you say your family support has been on you? I would say I couldn't have done it without them. Um, I will say being an only child gets lonely, but I will say it does give my parents the time to focus on me. So it's kind of a bittersweet. But um, when I tell you they're so involved, like any idea I have, give them an hour. They're like, well, here's a plan for if you want to get this done. So they push me really to my full potential because um, I doubt myself a lot. But with their support, they always continue pushing me to move forward and um like my even my first film they're like okay we're gonna make sure you have enough money to feed the cats we're gonna make sure you know da, 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 we put some money together oh, you know that and it yeah oh, you know it, it takes a village it really does it takes a village That's because i was like you know i was telling them i was like you know of course people when they're acting you know people when they get hangry you know they're not going oh, the yeah, attitude's yeah, gonna be so. off <laughs> and i thank god we had food because right. i tell you my actor coming four hours later and i'm like 
Uh, People gotta be in the right headspace to do yes. certain things, like, yes. especially certain scenes. Yes, yeah. but the good thing is that the energy is always good. Everybody in the uh, production team was just such an asset, and every role they had, the energy was good. Even though it took them four hours, we didn't. It didn't feel like four hours. So we were so excited for filming. We we're like, well, we're gonna have everything in line. So when he comes, we just boom, 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 okay. and we don't even have to have no wait time. We're gonna break to eat, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be that. But um, okay, yeah, so it definitely went smoothly, right? After yeah, it, it did. Okay. I will say, once he got there, everything was smooth, and it was like a deep breath. Once we got to that eighth hour of filming, we're like. Like, whew, right. it's a wrap so okay. that that felt really good but I always emphasize it takes a village because um, even even outside of them I have my grandparents everything like even if people can't do much even just asking what can they do to help means a lot because yeah. it shows their support okay. and with me being at school and most of my family being in Dallas or in Atlanta or wherever like across the south they still always kind of message me and just be like you know how can I help I know you That's know because they know I'm not gonna ask like especially yeah. I have a grandfather in Atlanta and I'm one of those like listen if I don't guys together I'm not gonna ask for help That's the same way I'll right. just be like yeah it's going good they'll be like no for real I'm like okay well for real I need some help like no, since she just gone since she got it out of me I was like yeah I need some help I, so I, man, it's something about like just get like if I ask you I'm really at that point oh, yeah. it's like I need it okay I, I need it I can't I need it I think it's like a pride thing too, like especially Big if it's time. something like Big you're time. so protective of and passionate about, you're like, I don't let these people think, I don't want them to think I'm folding, like, yeah, you know, I, I, I can't just, fold on the pressure, so yeah, it's like, no, I've got it. No, definitely. I've told, I told people I can do this. Right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stop. Right. And it's like, no, nah, I got it, and then panic attack in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I'm not going to tripping. Lost so, all the money. Lost, yeah, definitely all the money. I have. get it, man. You're not alone. I want you to know you're doing big things out here. Thank Keep you. Doing I appreciate it, girl. I want to know how long, like boom, when you had the, you finished the script, spring play ready. How long did it take to boom find the cameraman, boom find the find the cast, find the venue? So when, I can actually talk about my too. experience right now because the smoothest experience I had with all that going on last uh, last fall, I actually that was the most smoothest. Um, transition I had for filming only because it was for a class grade so my teammates had to sign up for my um, project okay, that's for the difference so I will say that I had to cut some people from the production team on filming day because some just didn't show up mm. and one showed up but she got there six hours late mind you mm. after four hours like she comes and then she said she's gonna stay for 30 minutes I'm like well what? you could have stayed where you were at I was you're like, not, you know what? Be. Listen, you're not gonna put on a credit. You can go on, go look, you can grab you a little sandwich, and you can go on out. Cause <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with it. Yeah, nah. So it was really the smoothest because we had um, my professor just posted the jobs and said what day we're gonna film, and then they picked it up. So they knew for their grade, they had to be a part of somebody's film. So that decided to be mine. I actually am grateful for the team that I had because, like I said, besides those couple that um, didn't take it serious, the my gaffer, my sound, everybody was doing what they're supposed to do in my AD. Shout out to her, Alexia White. So she- Shout out to you. Yeah, she graduated now. So sad, I wanted her on, on this film. I was like, look, yeah. you are the perfect assistant director. I could ask for anytime I need something. She's like, proactive, the epitome of a great assistant director. So I, I missed her when she said she graduated because I was like, ah, I got a film I need you to be a part of. Can you please come for me? But I was like, you know what, it's all right. So I will say, I learned how to get a team now with this film I'm working on. So it just kind of took me all the connections within the year later that I made with people. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, they know I've proven myself now, right? So now it's like they know I'm, I'm professional. They know the kind of work I put out. So it's like, I trust you. So they're mm -hmm. more willing to do it. So I just had to go. Um, literally, I just passed my last person today, but I just uh, went on this software called Studio Binder that keeps me organized when I uh, do my filmmaking and I just li it lists out all the different departments and what I need and what I already have so I was like okay I need this person left I need a person to sound I need a BTS videographer and then I just kind of checked off off of my to-do list right, and um, right. I just made sure that I did that before I even cast it because creating a team is almost more important than having the cast because mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you don't have a solid cameraman if you don't have a solid sound person it's gonna be bullshit and that's right. just honest and you don't want to put out anything that is not going to depict your 
your writing because like I said I'm a powerful writer I put a lot of heart and passion to my film so I make sure that my production team is solid before I even pick my cast because I just know what the connection I have I can find actors even if it's not to the level that I want I know I'm gonna find actors at the end of the day yeah. but that production team I hand select everybody to make sure that I trust them and I can know that they work well under pressure because you also want people that will be on time like I just told you about that that are on time that will take it serious and that know what they're doing because as the director I, I'm in charge of everything, but if everybody's doing their job, that makes my job a lot easier. Because so like my cameraman knows if he's already looked at the storyboard and pre-production, he knows how we're gonna shoot every scene. I don't have to take the time to teach him or show him. Right. So that's I why like you that. want a strong cinematographer because my cinematographer actually flying in from North Carolina. He his first project was uh, produced by Beast by Dre. It was a um, scholarship program. He's a HBCU alum, great guy. His name's Eric Wheeler. I met him at a networking event in um, at, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we just hit it off ever since. It's both filmmakers, and so he said he'll fly in to produce my next film, and I haven't been more excited. That's so incredible. I just have look. I have a lot of big people on this next project. I know it's gonna be my biggest one yet. I have so much faith in it. Yeah. I can't wait for y'all to see it. I mean, so. I, I'm not no, look, so December is gonna look. It's something about December because I release. December 28th, my uh, Fletcher Between Us. Okay. So I'm gonna try and get it out. It's gonna be in December, but the date is still gonna depend on how long editing takes. And yeah, but December of 2021. We'll and do you, um, do you edit your own? So I, you I did not edit my own short film because I'm still learning um, effective editing. So okay. um, I can edit like YouTube videos, different other right. things like basic, um, um, technology but when it comes to 6k footage transitioning dumping the footage making sure that it's transitioned well I still have a lot to learn with that so it's like sure. I, I know a lot but still there's people above me so I always get people that are further than me because they can teach me so that trickle down effect mm -hmm. yeah so I always like my team I always tell people either you're on my same level or you're above me and that's because I have room for improvement and right. then I also am, um, am accepting interns for produ production assistants that are just now coming in the film, not sure if they want to do it or not. So I'm going to um, actually put that out there within the next week and let people sign up to say, hey, I want to be a part of your film. How can I help? So that just kind of shows also that I give back to my university because I don't know where this film's going to go, but I have faith that it's going to go far. Yeah. So if they can have the opportunity to say they worked on this film, this piece, this award winning, because I know it's going to come. I know yeah. awards are going to come. So if I can give back to them and it's like somebody that is, you know, into film but not sure if this is their craft, this is the opportunity to put to the test. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you just, you know, have faith in me, I'm going to have faith in you. Because I always say every role on set is important. It doesn't matter if you're just holding the microphone as a gaffer for sound. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're a cinematographer. It doesn't matter if you're just lights. Everything has to be effectively executed in each department to make sure that it comes together as a whole. So, I'm not gonna lie to you. I might just be the first one on that list. You might look, I'll take you because I need more hands on dick. Sure. And more hands on dick, that just means my job will be made a lot easier. Yes. And I always treat people how I like to be treated. And it took people bringing me in. My first internship was in 2019. Um, the film, the freshman year, I don't know if you heard about it when it was filming on campus. I did. I didn't in 2019. Get to see, was it, how did it go? Um, so, it's it. actually in post production now. It's finally going to be released. Okay. They had to go okay. through some cool. legal issues and kind of get the the ownership it was a lot going on but it's finally about to be released so that'll be beautiful to finally see that come together but waiting on that. but yeah that was my first semester in film and that's when i was like this is what i want to do because i was just yeah. and i was and it's crazy because when i interviewed for it and i told them you know i want to i want to shadow the cinematographer i want to be the camera person they're like okay and then they're like actually you know we we want to put you on makeup I called mom and I cried. I cried because I'm like, I don't want to be. I never said me. Right. Made me so I was like, bad. I put cinematographer or shadow the director. I never said yeah. hair and makeup. Yeah. They're like, actually, I, we're gonna put you in hair and makeup. And I was just like, why? I cried. So they said because they feel like with the look that I have, that they'll I'll make sure that their cast will be, you know. I would have wanted to meet you both then. Right, That's so this is what I did to my mom, because I was like, no, I don't even want it no more. Like, I don't want to shadow yeah. the lady making wigs, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not my thing, yeah, so. Making people make up. Right, so my mom was like, this is what you do. Because I told you it takes a village, right? So, um, and my mom's my best friend. People that know me, they know that. So I called her, she's like, this is what you do. You go do your job, you're gonna do the makeup, you're gonna do the hair, whatever they got you doing, but you're gonna finish your job, and then you're gonna go shadow the cameraman yeah. anyway. Yeah best advice I could ever got because I was like you know what I'm not even gonna be on the movie I was like I'm not gonna learn how to make a wig while I'm trying to see how you know to do lights and stuff mom was like take the opportunity 
go where they tell you to go, but then go where you want to go. Because it's like, after I did my job, what can I really do, right? As long as I'm not messing up anything on set. So I did my hair and makeup, learned what I need to learn, and then I was behind the cameraman. So that's just really where it started. What you say? Mm -mm. They, look, they were happy that I was just an extra hand on set. They yeah. was like, well, know who you are, but here, pass me this. Yeah. So I was like, it works. So, as long as you um, in the door. And, it was, and it's actually a feature film. So a feature film just means it's longer than 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, feature films are very um, important when it comes to experience because those filming, that took a month of filming and they filmed every single day. And so a feature film typically is at least 100 pages of script. My short films are like, 10 pages so imagine 100 yeah, pages so how many hours a day were they shooting I was about to ask they that. filmed from sun up to sundown every day mm. for a month straight and so with different budgets you can have access to different things so they had a trailer so that's where all hair and makeup would be and then they had a van that would take them to the different set locations so um i was i would hate the days that i that i would have to be there at sun up because i'll have to be stationed in hair and makeup for like the full load and so I have to be there for hours because then I can't just run and get in the van and yeah. go shadow them because like no we need you for the next scene so um yeah but it was still a great experience because even when I got cut for the day um reps for my department that just gave me more time to be able to be on set with the movie so mm -hmm. um yeah when makeup was done the good thing is that makeup even though we're they're there from sun to sundown it's just for simple touch-ups and right. since I wasn't getting paid to do that, I was just the intern, the official makeup artist just did touch-ups. So I was okay. able to have some leisure time to go, oh, I can go home, I'm like, okay. And I go find where they located on set, and, and I'd be room. there. Yeah. And so that's just kind of how I was like, okay, for sure, this is what I want to do. Because I, I loved it too much. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as I got out, like, I would hate when, because they had to, my schedule had to depend on my class schedule because we were in person, pre-pandemic life, right? So I <laughs> had, let's say, <laughs> let's say my class day was like from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I would go be at makeup for 7 a.m. I had ugh, that mm. film, it was so much fun. I didn't even mind losing sleep, but I was up on, um, on set at 7 a.m. for my call time, mm. doing hair and makeup, all that. Go to class at 10 a.m break for those hours, eat lunch or whatever, then come back and I'm there till 9, 10 o'clock at night. Oh, wow. So oh, yeah, wow. it, was a, it was a great experience though, because now, because that set the tone for other feature films I'm part of. So I actually got my first paid position um, this past summer, thanks to my professor Clomax, Tony Clomax, I um, love him. But um, he is the one that also pushes me really far to my best potential. And I got the assistant director position and that's why I was in New Jersey flying out you know and so I was writing my new film that's incredible that's yeah good. so I'm a busy woman I try to stay you know booked and busy but I do make sure I have some downtime to make sure I'm sane and yeah stuff. Right. you gotta keep your mental health in, mm -hmm. in check because that's a big it is overcome oh. I really love that I like that <laughs> Yeah, mental health is a big thing over here on our podcast. But I just want you to know we are very so proud of you. Thank and you. I appreciate it. Before we wrap things up, um, are there any um, tips or advice you'd like to give the viewers on getting in your shoes? So as far as the advice I can give for getting where I am, I will always say just keep moving forward, regardless if um, you know you have the support or you're not, because it'll come. You know. The support in the beginning isn't always the biggest because people like to hop on the bandwagon once they've seen it done, right? We all know that, right? But it's just that, you know, you have to go so hard for yourself that it doesn't matter if you get no likes, no shares, you're still being consistent because you have that much faith in yourself that you don't need the support of others. But even though it feels good, but yeah. you'll do it even if you have the support of no one, even if it's just the support of your parents, your best friend, anybody, as long as you have that solid circle that believes in you, the sky's the limit. And even then, you know, you can go to the moon, so. Hey, I love it. Miss Tiana's over here dropping right. the gems like a clumsy, <laughs> like a clumsy, clumsy queen. Right. Bloody somebody, bloody. somebody will listen in my eyes. That's how right. I get it. Somebody gonna see it, somebody gonna like it. Right. That's but dope. I'm really I really appreciate y'all for having me. Oh, so good. Y'all made my day. I'm We're proud that you even I came. can't wait to see I'm this so film. No, definitely. I'm Decent, all right? So my question for y'all is right. what did y'all think about Fiction Between Us? Because I heard y'all seen it, so I gotta I gotta hear y'all's so, feedback. So mm -hmm. Um I don't know if my, my counterpart saw it because I, I never actually sent it to him, but as soon as I saw it, that's 
I did. That's my mistake. But as soon as I saw it, that's when I immediately uh, contacted you in your in your DMs because I it was it was a short film, but it was powerful. And even the the storyline, what what really fucked me up was the ending. <laughs> What's I'm the, not, no, 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 and how this traumatic event has changed the way their marriage looks. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think you actually did a great job of portraying the, the gender thing of, of the grieving. Because the biggest thing was, I can't get away too much of what I wanted to say, but the biggest thing was that I wanted to make sure that people knew that it looks different in men and women, but that doesn't mean the person isn't grieving. Right. And they can take that away with them in life and understand because everybody at some point is going to deal with grief and it doesn't feel good all the time and um i want them to understand that you can still relate to someone even though their grief looks different and know that just because they look like they're handling it, handling it better is um doesn't mean that their hurt is any more or less than yours Definitely. so but i know for me personally i i somewhat related to the um well, he was, was, he, was he the main character the, jason uh, yes I, I somewhat related to jason only for the fact that I'm not a big crier myself. Like I can, I, I cry in certain situations, like if I'm at a funeral or I'm going through like a really tough time. Like I don't want to get it misconstrued. I, a nigga can cry when he, right. when he at his low point. Right. Right. But when it comes to grieving in, in different aspects and, um, and avenues, I don't always cry, especially like just out in public. In yeah, I'm or, to yes, um, you know, it's a personal thing and some people do that or feel a certain way about that differently. Um, but I know for him, even in that situation, I know he's grieving. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna say what all happened because I'm not gonna check it out. It's not that long. You gotta watch this as soon as I leave. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but I know you, you can hear the pain in his voice. He, he's definitely, he feels the pain I, I that feel she's like, doing. I know, because I'm not, I'm not a big cry either, but I definitely know some dudes who are. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I want to see that. that so good. the psychology I put with that when I wrote it was because I wanted to highlight the dynamic, especially with him being a black male, about how black men, they may not look like they're grieving, but they go through life just like anyone else. And even though it's so many pressures to be, you know, um, to be just a black man in America, I really want to highlight how you can still be at a low point and be at a broken point, but look like you still have it all together. And so that's why I left so many loopholes in the, in the, um, and this powerful conversation that this um, that this couple has because I wanted the audience to understand that there's somebody you may know that's going through the same thing but their coping mechanism is throwing themselves into work like Jason does. Right. So right. that's the psychology behind it. So. Like, like for me personally, when I'm going through something like that or far, I'm grieving or I'm stressed out, I, I like to work out. It like keeps my mind off it. And it's therapeutic. It's very therapeutic, exactly. Um, but at the same time, it is okay to, to cry for mm -hmm. man or woman. It's, it's actually healthy. It's very healthy to just vent things out. Even if you can't talk to like um, your parents, find a peer, find a friend, mm -hmm. talk it out. You you will feel a, a huge weight just lifted off for your shoulders sure. after a good conversation, I promise you. Yes, and with me having severe anxiety, I'm a big mental health advocate as well. So that's why I put such um such thought into every piece of uh work that i do because i want people to understand because a lot of people don't even understand what anxiety is right. so i like to highlight a lot of different things people go through that it's like you probably know somebody going through this but you just didn't think of it from a different perspective you're able to see it now because at the end of the day i'm storytelling when i write my films i'm stories i'm telling stories it's like what do i want my audience to take away i hit so many pillars in that one i just can't wait for you to see the next one so that will be released December of 2021. I don't have an exact, exact date yet, but it will be coming soon. Cool. But you heard it here first. It's titled To Serve and Protect Who. So mm. really, you know, yeah, really tune in because I have so much fun. I have so many powerful events, hit so many different audiences. And I will say I'm highlighting my black men in this one. 
I'm really let me, let me know when you release the uh, synopsis for that. I will. Check I that will. Out. So, let's go for well, it. I heard it first. Yeah, he's not a fan. I mean, I'm looking forward. Okay. Make that turn. Right. That's yeah. what Check I like to hear. Okay. Be here, for sure. Uh, Y'all hear it here first. What girl, T-Bobs? Yeah, T-Bobs. <laughs> uh, hey, roll up. In the flesh. Nice. Love it does. Bro. In the flesh, you know. Any, 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 any closing words you want to say to our, to our lovely fans? I'm sure they love you. Just thank y'all for having me. You know, just I'm so happy to be here in this pandemic. I don't always get to have these conversations about my work in person, so it just feels uh -huh. good. It feels real therapeutic. I don't really talk about myself too much. So when I <laughs> when I got here, I was like, we talked about me the whole time. And I was like, okay, give me the topic. Give me the flowers. Right. Bro. Okay, so I'm, I'm with it, but yep, yeah, that's that's all I have. Stay tuned, stay connected on my social media. It's gonna be in the description box. Definitely. And yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, we gonna make sure that y'all, like I said, Very check welcome. all of that out. Description, social media, and the YouTube is gonna be in the description. Definitely. Y'all, please stay tuned for that. Anything and leave in the comments after you see the footage between us how y'all feel about it. Thanks. Let me know. Um, closing statements. I just want everybody to. Uh, understand how important anxiety and mental health awareness is especially in the black community uh because you know that can get put down so often in our community especially for black men and women so hey just vent those things out yes. you'll feel much better i promise I'm one of those. Hey, i'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna talk right. to you. <laughs> hey man thank y'all for watching please stay tuned y'all like i said go check it out Definitely. thank you thank you thank you for watching You know, I was just venting, man, you know.